Cooper Adams is taking his teenage daughter, Riley, to a concert to see her favorite artist, Lady Raven. As they chat on the way, Cooper realizes that Riley is having a tough time at school, especially with a girl named Jody. He senses her frustration but tries to keep the mood light, hoping the concert will lift her spirits. When Lady Raven finally takes the stage, Riley and the other girls around them burst with excitement, cheering and singing along. Seeing Riley so happy makes Cooper smile, but he soon quietly excuses himself to go to the bathroom. While in the bathroom, Cooper checks his phone, using a special app that lets him monitor his captive, Spencer Gordon. Satisfied that everything is under control, he puts his phone away and starts heading back to his seat. On his way, Cooper unexpectedly bumps into Jody's mom. She clearly wants to talk about the issues between their daughters, but Cooper, anxious to get back to Riley, tries to brush her off as politely as he can. He hurries back to his seat, hoping to avoid a longer conversation. As he sits down next to Riley, he notices a lot of police officers entering the balcony area. His heart skips a beat, but he quickly shifts his focus back to the concert, trying not to let his unease show. Cooper and Riley decide to take a break from the concert to find a souvenir t-shirt. When they reach the merchandise stand, they discover that another girl has just bought the last shirt. Cooper starts chatting with Jamie, the salesman, to see if there are any more shirts available. While they're talking, Cooper also asks Jamie about the heavy police presence at the venue. Jamie quietly explains that the police received a tip-off about a serial killer known as The Butcher, who might be at the concert. The arena is surrounded by officers to prevent him from escaping. Cooper, who is actually The Butcher, smiles and brushes off the information, but he realizes he needs to be extra cautious. On their way back to their seats, Cooper spots a chance to create a distraction by pushing a drunk woman down the stairs. The commotion grabs everyone's attention, but when Cooper looks for an escape route, he sees that the main exit is heavily guarded by police. With no clear way out, he and Riley return to their seats just as Lady Raven starts her next song, which features a collaboration with another artist, Parker Wayne. Cooper notices Parker coming up from beneath the stage and jokingly suggests to Riley that they should sneak down to see what's under there. Riley thinks her dad's idea is a bit strange and dismisses it. Deciding to try again, Cooper talks to Jamie, who now offers to take him to the storage room to find a t-shirt for Riley. As they walk, Jamie mentions his interest in true crime and how he's been following the butcher's crimes closely. While chatting, Cooper discreetly swipes Jamie's ID card, thinking it might come in handy later. Cooper uses Jamie's stolen ID card to sneak into the break room where the police are discussing their plans to catch him. In the room, he swipes a police radio to listen in on their strategy. After getting the information he needs, he heads out but runs into Jody's mom again. She's more persistent this time, but Cooper manages to calm her by agreeing to let Riley and Jody go out for pizza. Satisfied, Jody's mom leaves them alone. Back at the concert, Cooper listens to the police radio and hears Dr. Josephine Grant, the FBI's top profiler, explaining how the butcher might try to escape. Realizing the police think he'll cause chaos to get away, Cooper decides not to set off a fire alarm. Instead, he comes up with a new plan. He throws two glass bottles of oil into a boiling fryer. When an employee walks by, the bottles explode, splashing her with hot oil and causing severe burns. Cooper then puts on an apron and heads to the roof. There, he encounters two SWAT officers. He tricks them by showing the ID he stole from Jamie and using the code word Hamilton, which every employee is supposed to know. After returning to the concert, Cooper learns from Riley that Lady Raven is selecting a girl from the audience to be the Dreamer Girl and dance to her song of the same name. Cooper spots Mr. Knight Shyamalan, Lady Raven's uncle, and a spotter at the event. He quickly invents a touching story about Riley recovering from leukemia, which moves Mr. Shyamalan enough to arrange for Riley to be chosen as the dreamer girl. They are then escorted backstage, where Cooper stays on high alert for Dr. Josephine Grant and the police. When Riley is called up to join Lady Raven on stage, Cooper notices that Jody and her mom look upset. After the performance, Lady Raven finishes with one last song featuring the thinker. Cooper helps a girl who is about to faint and takes her to the medical tent. Later, Cooper and Riley are taken backstage by the tour manager to meet Lady Raven. While they wait, 
Cooper overhears through the police radio that Dr. Grant has instructed officers to check every male visitor before they leave. Realizing he's in danger, Cooper privately tells Lady Raven that he is the butcher. He shows her Spencer's location on his phone and threatens to release carbon monoxide into the room if she alerts the police. Cooper demands that Lady Raven let him and Riley leave with her in her limo, which won't be checked by the police. In the limo, Lady Raven offers to drop Cooper and Riley off at their home. Riley is thrilled and eagerly agrees, but Cooper feels uneasy, sensing that Lady Raven might have an ulterior motive. When they arrive, Cooper's wife, Rachel, and their son, Logan, greet them. Rachel invites Lady Raven to stay for dinner. During the meal, Lady Raven brings up the butcher, discussing her research into his habits, such as his possible OCD, use of fake houses for his crimes, and issues with his mother. She also mentions that the police were tipped off about the butcher's presence at the concert because a ticket receipt for the event was found at one of his crime scenes. Cooper tries to get Lady Raven to leave, but she insists on playing a song on the piano. She asks Riley to sit next to her and takes her phone. After playing, Lady Raven suggests taking a selfie and grabs Cooper's phone to do so. She then runs into the bathroom with the phone while Cooper starts to lose his composure. In the bathroom, Lady Raven opens the camera app to speak with Spencer, hoping to get information from him. After learning what Spencer saw before his capture, she starts a live stream to her fans to get clues about Spencer's location. One fan mentions a place with a broken lion statue near a house with a blue door, and Lady Raven instructs her to call the police. She also texts her driver to do the same. Rachel grows suspicious and asks Lady Raven about her odd behavior. Lady Raven reveals that Cooper is the butcher. Furious, Cooper bursts out of the bathroom to find that Rachel and the kids are missing. Checking his phone, he discovers that Spencer is also no longer in captivity. Cooper decides to have Lady Raven cuff herself so they can escape. Lady Raven starts speaking to him in a way that mimics his mother, trying to manipulate him. Though Cooper isn't fooled, he admits that he had planned one final crime before ending his own life. As he opens the garage door, he sees Rachel, Riley, and Logan standing outside. Lady Raven exits the limo and approaches them just as the police and SWAT teams arrive at the house. Cooper closes the garage door and makes his escape through a side exit into the neighbor's yard. Cooper disguises himself as a SWAT officer to sneak into Lady Raven's limo and drive away with her, handcuffing her to the door. As they drive through town, Raven manages to open a window and attract fans who surround the limo. She then frees herself by prying the cuffs off the door handle. The police quickly catch up and shoot out the limo's tires to stop Cooper. When they check inside, they find only the SWAT uniform propped up and realize that Cooper has escaped again. Lady Raven is then taken to where Spencer is being held. She thanks the fan who alerted the police and comforts Spencer, who is relieved and grateful for her help. Back at home, Rachel is alone since the kids are staying at her sister's house. Cooper arrives to finish her off, having figured out that someone close to him must have tipped off the police. Rachel reveals that she suspected Cooper's odd behavior was due to an affair. She grew more suspicious when she noticed he smelled like cleaning chemicals used in hospitals. Rachel had discovered one of the fake houses, which were condemned for fire hazards, and planted the concert ticket receipt there before notifying the police. Cooper plans to kill Rachel, but is taken aback when she offers him a slice of pie she made for Riley. As he eats, Cooper realizes too late that Rachel has laced the pie with the same drugs he uses on his victims. He starts to lose consciousness and hallucinates, seeing his mother one last time before the police arrive. They tase him repeatedly until he collapses. Cooper is arrested, and as he is being taken away, he stops to prop up Riley's old bicycle. Riley is brought home and tearfully hugs her father goodbye before he is hauled off. After the police leave, the camera focuses on the bike, revealing that one of the spokes is missing. Cooper has taken the spoke and is using it to pick the locks on his cuffs, grinning with malicious intent as he prepares for another escape. Meanwhile, Jamie is at home watching the news about the butcher's capture. When he sees that Cooper is the one caught, Jamie begins to panic, ending the story on a tense note.